Hi, this is Brady O'Leary with Lagoons Do It Better TV. I'm here with Steve Harris of h and Environmental. It's a really lucky day for you guys to have him here. Uh, we were actually doing a training over in Adel, Iowa, uh, helping operators to optimize the lagoon uh, they have to do it better. Um, and he just so happened to have a little bit of extra time. So I thought I'd introduce him. Uh, I don't want to put too many words into this, but let me put it this way. Steve in h and Environmental for us is, if there's an issue that we can't solve, or there's a gremlin that we can't figure out, we call Steve. He's kind of like the Delta Forces of Lagoon, you know, operations and engineering. He kind of skirts that line. He does a little bit of both. Uh, so he's a he does a really good job of helping people in tough spots. Uh, so with that, uh, Steve, you want to tell us a little bit about what you do? Sure. Um, you know, back when I started, uh, back in the early 90s, there were no resources for lagoon operators. And it was really frustrating. I would go to these rural water seminars and everything, and it was all about activated sludge and water plants, I mean, nothing really for lagoon operators. And I sensed a real need to start pulling together some information for lagoon operators to help them to, to pass their permit limits, to meet their permit limits, and to optimize their system. So I started gathering data, and as I gathered data, I realized there's a lot of information out there. It was just spread out. And so I was able to, to pull together a lot of resources on lagoons and uh, created a book. I uh, wrote a book about lagoon operations and um, published that through USA, with USA Blue Book. But I have a passion for lagoon systems. I mo exclusively uh, work with lagoon operators. I used to spend a lot of time in activated sludge, but I am dedicated now to uh, wastewater lagoons and have been for the past 20 some odd years. And um, you know, the problem with lagoons is, is that they were built in the 50s, 60s and 70s and even the 80s. Before the engineers really had a good handle on um, lagoon mechanics, hydraulics, the chemistry and biology, and we've come so much farther now uh, to this point, and we know how to um, solve those problems. So an engineer may look at a lagoon and say, there's no hope for it, but there's a lot of different things, Brady, that we could do for lagoons to optimize them and to help them to meet per permit limits. And um, very simple things all the way up to complicated things, and lagoons can, can do the job, they really can. And uh, it's a simple matter of diagnosing the problem and step-by-step step, systematically going through, looking at the lagoon, evaluating the lagoon, testing the lagoon, and then, and then systematically solving the problem. We try to do everything we can for free, uh, solving problems for free, and then we start looking at other things like solving short-circuiting problems or adding aeration for ammonia removal, which is critically important. And um, so uh, we have found that most lagoons can be optimized to meet current permit limits. And I'm talking single digit BOD and TSS, uh, lower than one milligram per liter of uh, ammonia, especially with triple points help and, and um, solving some of the other lagoon problems, desludging ponds, stopping short circuiting and that sort of thing. And uh, there's a lot that can be done for a lagoon system uh, to get it to, uh, to meet uh, permit limits. And it seems like you, you do it all, and I don't, I don't want to gloss over the fact that you just you said that you essentially wrote the book on lagoon operations, which is fantastic. Well, well, one of many books. There are a lot of books <laughs> out there. Dr. Linville Rich, and of course yeah. Joe Middlebrooks has written a lot. But we have his book sitting on our desk. We consult it whenever. Again, we're, we don't know what's going on. We look in and see if there's an answer in here. So it's a, it's a really useful tool. Well, thanks um, for saying that. So you work with lagoons a lot, right? Uh, it, always, every day of the week. Every, exclusively every day of the week for the all, over 20 years now. Mm -hmm. Just lagoons, lagoons, lagoons. Right. So we started the, 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 the conversation here with Lagoons Do a Better TV. And that's something that we say a lot. We live by. And I was wondering what lagoons do it better. What does that mean for you? What it means for, for me is it means that the, uh, the operators can keep their existing lagoon system by optimizing it. And um, what it means is that the lagoons can continue to work and that these communities don't have to uh, buy into the active notion that activated sludge is, is their only solution. A lagoon can do it, Brady. Mm -hmm. A lagoon can really put out really excellent water quality. It really can. Single digits. If we had the time here, I could show you 18 systems, like right now, that are actually putting out single-digit numbers. Um, ammonia, uh, nitrates, uh, BOD, TSS, and putting out a really good water quality. And that's because they've solved some of these problems that were built into it back in the 50s and 60s and 70s, even the 80s and 90s, I would say. 
But uh, there is hope for lagoons. There really is. They can be upgraded. They can be modified to put out excellent water quality. What that means for the community is that they keep their current infrastructure. They keep the current lagoon. You don't have to decommission the lagoon, spend millions on an activated sludge plant. And um, what it means for the operator is that he can continue operating that. He doesn't have to go for a higher certification, which is probably a good idea to take, get the extra education. But this, the, the, the municipality or industry is able to keep its lagoon systems by just using a few simple principles, by um, overcoming and compensating for the inadequacies built into the lagoon system originally. And so that's kind of our message is that lagoons do it better and they can. And at the very least, you need to give it a chance. You need to take a look at your lagoon and ask the question, what can be done to optimize my existing um, a lagoon system? At least get a, a quote, at least get an idea, call somebody in from triple point or otherwise and say, what can I do to my current system to optimize it? Um, in all due respect to engineers, a, a lot of engineers would rather just forget the optimization process and put an activated sludge plant in there. And I like activated sludge. It works. It's, it really does fit. The problem is most of my clients can't afford an activated sludge plant. Small rural communities, population of 300 people, 400, 500, even up to 1,000. It gets really expensive uh, to fund these types of things, not to mention the, sludge, the, the monthly sludge removal costs, the electrical costs, hiring extra people to, to operate this system, replacement of pumps, it goes on and on. There are a lot of hidden sort of costs in decommissioning your lagoon and going forward to our mechanical plant. So we're really married to the concept that lagoons do it better. You can, you really can optimize your lagoon system to bring it into compliance. You just have to have the will yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's we, we like to say that we want to upgrade wastewater lagoons to produce effluent as good or better than an activated sludge plant. Yeah. They weren't designed to do that. They weren't designed for ammonia or TSS or phosphorus. We're not. Um, and we can update them to meet those limits. And I think your, 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 cut, your juxtaposition to uh, activated sludge plants is interesting. They are a great, wonderful piece of technology. They are. They work awesome. well. But it's like... A small town, you know, they, they need a pickup truck, truck, something that's reliable, easy to operate, easy to work on. Give an activated sludge plant to a small town, say you get a grant to pay for it. So it's free, which rarely happens, but say it does. You know, when you give a Ferrari to somebody who can't maintain it, can't afford to maintain it, as soon as you have to replace the tires, that's $30,000. Mm -hmm. So in, in, mm -hmm. in addition to the complexity and the cost, the operation cost is, is prohibitive. So uh, we're, we're, on, we're on the same, same page there. Well, that's a good analogy, and it really does carry. It really does fit. And I've seen that myself in person. Uh, a small rural community uh, saddled basically with a SBR system or otherwise an MBBR system, and the operators are just, they're lost, and they have to have contract operators come in, operate the plant, and then at the end of the, the month, it's like, I, I can't afford the solids handling. Mm -hmm. I can't afford to, to, to de-sludge, to waste. And, and they get into these positions where nocardia starts kick coming on and foaming because they've got you know six, seven feet of sludge in a reactor and, and a countless other issues. And so what happens is, is that small communities are ill-prepared in most cases, to, to handle an activated sludge plant. They really, really are. It's, it's a, and if the fact, if lagoons could be made to do it as good or almost as good, why not? Right. At least hear us out. You have that infrastructure in place. Yeah, you have it in place. So it sounds like, I mean, I knew it ahead of time, but you're absolutely a lagoons do a better guy. Oh yeah, um, totally. Uh, and a funny, before we end here, a quick funny story. Uh, every time Steve and we get around each other, it's talk, 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 crazy ideas. Some things that, we were, we were talking in the car today about reinventing fine bubble membranes. Some stuff goes nowhere, but there's an excitement there about how we can make this stuff better. Mm -hmm. And yesterday, Patrick and Steve were driving from one training session to another, and they're getting really, really into it on uh, actually a great idea, something we probably will be doing, uh, computational fluid dynamics to optimize your lagoon uh, with, with science and flow measuring and that sort of thing. And uh, they were so engrossed in the conversation, they just whizzed right by a cop and uh, were going a little too fast. So uh, if you see Patrick, uh, make sure you rag on him for that. Um, but it just goes to show that, you know, two peas in a pod. Well, let me just add this too. This is, I think, really important. I think we're just at the very beginning of the lagoon optimization 
thing, if you will. And we really are, there's so much farther to go. And you start taking a look at all these other technologies that could be brought to bear on improving the effluent quality of a lagoon. And it's just exciting. And again, we've just barely begun this optimization thing. And you know, if the engineers in the United States really focused on lagoons and what they could do to optimize them, it would be a a whole different environment. And I think we would progress a lot faster. But I will tell you this, that there's a lot more exciting things to come about optimizing lagoon systems and it's real and you can get it done. There's And, and I look forward to the time when I could talk to you maybe in person or at a training or something like that to go over these principles. We're, Brady and I are here at a two day class an optimization class in Adele, Iowa. Mm-hmm. And what we're doing is we're teaching the operators, no fluff, no, 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 no you know, no, solid practical stuff. And uh, so hopefully someday we'll see you at one of these uh, two day uh, workshops because there's a lot of great content. It's really four days of optimization and troubleshooting content boiled down into two days. So it is a lot, but we do spend time out in the field mm-hmm. like we did today. Yep over here at Adele at the lagoons, measuring dissolved oxygen, ammonia, nitrates, alkalinity, trying to find out where nitrification is occurring in the pond and then solving problems from there. So we hope to see you someday at a a two day lagoon training, even a one day. Mm -hmm. And we've been talking about squishing all this information down into the most pertinent things and the most important things for you. So with that, thank you very much. Yep, great, thank you. Uh, Any any operational questions you have, please feel free to uh, call Steve. Uh, H&S Environmental. Uh, if you have any equipment issues, please feel free to call Triple Point. That's what we do. Um, and thanks for watching. Uh, as Patrick always tells you, uh, we're trying to build a community of people around the goons to do it better. So go to Triple Point or tpenv.com slash LDIB. Uh, sign up for our Facebook page. We'll give you a free hat. Um, pretty exciting stuff. We want to get like-minded people together. So Well, there's really good content on that website too. It really, it's worth spending a few minutes anyway Thank you. looking at it and looking at the content because it's very educational. And it could, one small idea, one small idea could revolutionize a lagoon system, your system, uh, to meet permit limits. And think of it that way. Uh, that one idea may be the right idea, and you, you'll probably, chances are, find it on their website. Fantastic. All right. Well, like I said, lagoons do it better. Thanks for stopping by, Steve. And, Thanks. And uh, see you next time. Bye.